good evening uh, dear team of helis plantations uh, so we are back again uh, for another wonderful session in this great evening uh, with uh, helis plantations uh, tagline the iconic uh, uh, online training uh, module the uh, digital learning series uh, even if it's an expert session number 14 uh, so uh, uh, I would like to uh, warmly welcome you all to the session on behalf of our managing director, Dr. Roshan Rajdore, uh, and the entire state and corporate management teams of uh, Helis Plantations, uh, three companies. And uh, today we, are, we have invited another uh, well-known eminent uh, speaker uh, in Sri Lanka and the international faculty as well on this particular subject of today's topic. Uh, so today topic is uh, unstoppable you essence of communication in business world. Uh, so uh, dear team, uh, you might have observed uh, that in every job advertisement, they mention that the candidate must possess good communication skills. Communication skills are very much important in corporate world. As they always come in contact with internal and external stakeholders. For uh, personal and organizational communication to be effective, it leaves all parts, all parties involved, satisfied and feeling accomplished. By delivering messages clearly, there is no room for misunderstanding or alteration of messages, which decreases the potential for conflict. Effective communication strengthens the connections between a company and all of its stakeholders and benefits businesses in numerous ways stronger decision making and faster problem solving, earlier warning of uh, potential problems, increased productivity and steadier workflow, uh, stronger business relationships, clearer and more persuasive uh, marketing messages, enhanced personal uh, professional images for both employees and companies, and uh, low, uh, lower employee turn turnover and higher employee satisfaction. And finally, the most important, the better financial results and higher Return on uh, return for investors. One study published in Business Outlook, based on the responses from over 1,000 employers at Fortune 1,000 companies, found that workers sent and received an average of 1,798 messages each day via telephone, email, faxes, papers, and face to face communications. Some experts have estimated that the average businesses, business executives, spends approximately 75% to 80% of the day engaged in oral and written communication. Therefore, the ability to communicate with people both inside and outside the organization is a key characteristic of successful business builders. So therefore, we have selected today topic, a very useful topic for our day-to-day -day business and uh, even the professional personal life. So unstoppable you, essence of communication in business world. As I initially mentioned, Today, we have invited another eminent, a very famous and very talented uh, speaker on this particular subject. He's Dr. George Cook. Uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Roshan Rajore, our managing director and entire team of Helis Plantations, uh, George, we would like to warmly welcome to this great evening, uh, even with an expert. Uh, so uh, with that uh, great uh, warm welcome, George, let me introduce uh, you to the session uh, for the participants. Um, uh, dear friends, uh, Dr. George Cook, uh, he's an internationally trained communicator. George has been teaching effective communication as well as speech and drama for over two decades. He served as uh, National Communication Officer of the Sri Lanka Country Office of the World Health Organization, prior to which he was on radio and television for a decade. He trained in communication for behavioral impact by the World Health Organization in Thailand and by the British Broadcasting Corporation, we commonly known as BBC. He majored in mass communication, economics and sociology for his first degree, holding a master's degree in international relations and a doctorate in foreign policy. He's currently a senior lecturer at the University of Colombo and a visiting lecturer at several higher education institutions, including in the military. George is a diplomatic historian whose main areas of research include foreign policy, diplomacy, regionalism, and the integration. He served as a Sri Lankan diplomat from 2007 to 2017. 
During his decade-long career, he was attached to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Colombo, the Embassy of Sri Lanka in Paris, and the permanent delegation of Sri Lanka to UNESCO. With that uh, brief introduction, uh, George, may I invite you to the session? And uh, again, we would like to warmly welcome you and uh, control is uh, to you, uh, over, the, over to you, George. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that very warm welcome. And thank you for making me a part of this program, a series that you'll have started geared towards enhancing understanding on a variety of topics. And that is something very important in professional development, where we become that much more aware of new avenues. We try to understand what happens in other fields. And we try to incorporate some of those aspects into our lives, into what we do, and how we can make our professions that much better how we can take it to another level. That is what we're looking at uh, on a continuous basis. This is what it is uh, to say when we talk about being in various professions, whether it be various vocations that we get involved in, we always need to aspire to taking it to a much higher level in terms of the output that we can get guarantee and also ensuring that the quality of it improves. And so that is why I'm very happy to be on this platform this evening, uh, where we're going to look at communication. Uh, I like the terminology unstoppable you, because it means that we are actually unstoppable, unless of course, uh, there's a intervention of fate. Uh, and at that point we are stoppable, uh, but whilst we are in existence, whilst we are around, we are relatively unstoppable. There's so much that we can achieve. We sometimes think something is impossible only until we achieve it, only until we attempt it. And this is where, when we look at the human potential, the human capacity, it is massive. This vastness of human capacity extends into so many aspects, so many fields, so many areas of study, so many areas of development, so many areas of progress that we can achieve as individuals, as communities, as countries and as a global fraternity. And that is where we're focusing today on the business world. The business world, for obvious reasons, is understood to be the engine of growth. The business world contributes very effectively to progress in a country. We see this around the world. We see this in our country. When we look back at what this country has achieved and the progress that we have made, sometimes we ask the question, why did we go wrong? If we are able to identify where we went wrong, if we are big enough, magnanimous enough to accept that we went wrong at some stage. And one of the common aspects that keeps coming up all the time is that we might have done something marvelous. We might have achieved something great. We might have an amazing idea. We might want to contribute that to our organization, society, country. But one of the main stumbling blocks is the means by which we communicate it. And this is where I'm very happy to be speaking on this topic and be able to share some of my thoughts uh, on what is the true essence of communication in the business world. What is this essence of communication? I want to spend the next several minutes focusing on communication, the way it has evolved, how we understand it today but go very deep into understanding the importance of communication in the business world, or how we would identify it to be business communication, how we take it to a much more in-depth level, where we are able to understand the nitty gritty details of why it benefits us. Does it benefit us? And if so, what are the tangible benefits that we can accrue? Where does the potential lie? How do we discover these opportunities? This is where communication helps us win most of the game. That is where we have progressed way down the road uh, in terms of achievements that we want, results, targets, goals. That is where there is an orientation change, where we are trying to understand that in order to achieve the best for an organization, you must have clear, precise, strategized targets, goals and objectives that are going to be achieved. And this is where communication plays a very big role, a very vital role in the business world. And that is what I want to delve into today. Now, in terms of preparing for this evening, something that intrigued me was some of the research that has been done. 
research has been done into looking at where communication sits in terms of priority in the business world, where communication is in terms of making of a top leader, where communication sits in the business community. How has communication evolved? What is communication entail? For a long time, we looked at it from a very rigid portfolio. That was the media. And we thought that this was the main form of communication. You left communication entirely in the hands of the media. How is this transformed today in an era in which we are seeing a term being used today, and that is social media? Stop and wonder as to whether it's actually media. That's a question that we've got to ask ourselves. This is something that I will delve deeper into in the course of our conversation this evening. So I first like to start off with some statistics. The Future of Leadership report that came out some time ago identified various traits that define truly great leaders. Now, this is where they have looked across the board. They've looked at it from a perspective of professionalism. They've looked, it, looked at it from industry to industry in terms of comparisons amongst industries. This report has looked at it from a public private perspective in terms of understanding what it, it takes to define or create or mold truly great leaders in a plethora of avenues, plethora of areas, environments. And these were the common denominators that came up in the course of this study. Now, obviously, and very thankfully, integrity and authenticity heads the list. This is where if you do not have basic integrity and authenticity does not come to you naturally, you're going to have a huge problem. Of course, having a team around you becomes absolutely vital. But look at the third point that is on this list, and that is outstanding communication skills, 38% in terms of traits. Of course, there's a lot of other areas that are being taken into consideration, which are very relevant, no doubt about it at all. Resilience, strategic thinking, decisiveness, inclusiveness, your creativity and imagination, the work ethic that governs your day-to-day -day activities diversified experience that you have gained over the years, and very importantly, your track record of success. But look at how track record of success is down there at 4%. You may have been successful in the past. You may have had a success story, but that's the past. You need to be looking at the future. Whilst it's wonderful to rest on our laurels, look back, and remember that a lot has taken place, a lot has been done. We also need to move into that area of understanding a lot more has to be done. How do we move forward? What is the next step? What is the next stage? That is where you're looking at the whole process of communication. And this is where I like this particular uh, set of data because it coins very well into what I want to talk to you about today where the development of outstanding communication skills becomes pivotal. It's virtually a foundation that is being laid upon which you're going to construct this massive structure. That structure is going to be all about progress in industry, diversification, empowering people, making sure that they feel involved, they feel included, and also looking at adding value to your products. How are you going to communicate this with your customers, your clients, counterparts, competitors? How do we go about doing that? This is where outstanding communication skills plays an absolutely crucial role. Now, I've given you two sets of statistics here. If you look to your left, this is to do with the importance of skills for children. Now, this is research coming out of the Pew Research Center which you might have heard of, a very renowned research center, which focuses very heavily on understanding numbers, understanding statistics, which in turn help us understand our respective fields that much more, understand our professions that much more. 
So the percentage saying that a particular skill are most important for children to get ahead in the world today. Now, this is a study that came out a couple of years ago where a majority, 90%, this is um, almost an unqualified majority, such a large number that felt that communication was one of the most important skills for children to get ahead in the world today. Why is that? Of course, it's very important for them to be able to read. Mathematics is important for them to be able to understand the ability to analyze. You and I, when we did maths in school, must have wondered, when you look back at it now, you must be wondering, why did I do geometry? Why did I do sets, long divisions? We were being taught a process. We were being taught that, yes, you can use a machine. I remember a time when there were calculators, but we weren't allowed to use them. But rather than pushing those buttons and getting the answer, when you actually do the long division, you understand the steps, you understand the stages. Now that is something very important for us when we are trying to achieve some degree of progress in our life today, the way we understand our lives to be what they are in the current context. So mathematics, teamwork, encouraging children to work together, of course, writing, logic, science, athletics, music, art, all considered to be absolutely essential skills. But of course, this is how they have ranked it in terms of percentages. And very interestingly, communication sits at the very top of that list, where it was felt that 90% felt that this was an absolutely vital skill to developing children, which means development at a very early stage which is going to pay off later. It's going to have a huge impact on their lives in the years ahead. This is an investment that is being made, not for the time when the child is in school, may not even be during their teen years. The true results are going to be seen as these individuals enter institutions of higher education, as they conduct research, as they enter professions, as they move on into adult life. That's where you see communication becoming absolutely vital. And some of the research that LinkedIn conducted uh, in terms of looking at the most in-demand soft skills, especially when organizations are looking to hire close, they're not too far apart. When it comes to communication, it's at 57.9%, while interpersonal communication is at 55.0% or 55%. So when you look at some of these areas, you see that even though there is high demand for all of these areas, communication still manages to be ahead of the rest. Why is that? irrespective of the position in an organization, irrespective of the work that is being done in an organization, people have got to communicate effectively. This communication can be simply in the form of writing an email, making a presentation, convincing someone, arguing on behalf of an issue, resolving a matter, whatever it may be, you need to understand that taking communication to that higher level is absolutely vital. Until and unless that is done, that brilliant idea will remain in your head. That brilliant presentation that should have been made will remain on a laptop. That wonderful product that could have been sold will remain in a factory. This is where communication really helps us dress up the package, wrap it up very nice, very neatly, present it, that presentation becomes absolutely vital. When we talk about communication, we're looking at communication and you understand it to be a lot of things to a lot of people. We're talking chiefly about writing, we're talking about reading, we're talking about listening, but we're also going to another level. We're talking about an exchange. It's about people. It's about making connections. It's about talking. It's about a discussion. 
it's also very chiefly about a message. And that is the message that is conveyed by means of media. Now media can mean mainstream media, it can mean social media, it can mean the means by which we are communicating with the other, with an audience, with a group, the organization, whoever it may be. That is where media has transformed in terms of how we understand this term, how we understand this concept. If you go back in time, for us media, system around, still very popular. We look then at radio, theater of the mind. Whilst the newspaper gave you the printed form of information, radio made you think, radio made you actually listen. Sometimes we hear, but we don't listen. Radio made sure that we listened to what was being said whether you listen to the news or listen to songs or listened to a documentary, listen to a drama, radio really transformed the way in which we understood things. Why is that? Because as we listened, we created the images in our mind. It really spurred creativity. It infused imagination, gave us a riot of colors, gave us so much to think about. That's what radio did. And then we had television coming along. In terms of media, television has probably become the most popular. And most sadly, it has also become the most convenient form, which does not require us to think much. Why is that? When you watch television, as opposed to listen to the radio, television gives you the image. Television shows you the characters. Television will even sometimes give you the subtitles at the bottom. Television does it all. You just sit in front of it. And that's why sometimes it's also referred to as the idiot box, which is most unfortunate. But television has also transformed media. And it was a very crucial stepping stone that took us into an all new era that we live in today. The ability to see, to visualize, not just in our mind, but actually have the visual in front of us. This is what television did. This is how television transformed the whole field of media, but the entire spectrum of communication. So when we look at the current context or where we are today, yes, we have newspapers. Yes, the radios are very much around. You listen to them when you're driving. You might listen to them at home. You might have your newspaper on your table at office. You might have it at home. Your television would invariably be at home, on at home perhaps. You might have one at office in order if you want to check on some kind of breaking story, you want to view the visuals. But also today we are living in an era in which we are now seeing social media. This is where social media has taken over, probably pushed mainstream media aside Many people will prefer to read electronically. Newspaper sales. My prefer those tuning into radio channels is reducing. You can watch programs on the internet. Television is losing viewers. But it does not mean that those three mediums that we talked about so far are out of the picture. They're very much in it. That is why companies, organizations use those forms of media to advertise, to brand their products, to get a message across. They'd want the best pagers in the newspapers. They'd want the prime time on radio or television. Those forms of communication are very much around. But we are living in a time in which much change is taking place. How ready are we to face this change? How ready are we to be equipped? Do we have the necessary tools? Do we have the necessary mandate? Are, are organizations ready for it? 
have organizations put aside that era in which we only looked at newspaper advertisements, but now we need to look at what we are going to do when it comes to social media, or is social media only for millennials? Is social media only for teenagers? So some think that's not the case. Social media is transforming the world. We've got to transform with it. A quotation I use pretty often, paraphrasing it, of course, is what Charles Darwin observed a very long time ago. He noted that of all species, the species that would survive would be the species that evolves. If we don't evolve, we are not going to survive. The pandemic taught us that. If we were not going to get online, standing in line was going to have no consequence. We needed to move to that new dimension if we hadn't already. We needed to take everything onto a new virtual platform. Whether it was marketing, whether it was branding, whether it is education, you name it. Today, we are moving on to this virtual platform. And thankfully, we do have the technology to facilitate our engagement with this technology. We're very fortunate to have these changes taking place in 2021. Had the pandemic come around 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it would have been a much graver situation in terms of continuity. How would we have sustained things that we had started? Everything would have come crashing down. Of course, it's hypothetical. It didn't happen then, it's happening now. And the most important thing is how we deal with the present and how we look to the future. Now, in looking to the future, in trying to understand where we are going and what we are trying to do, we've got to become that much more aware of social media. What is social media? I come back to that question I asked you at the very beginning. Is it media? Newspapers, television, radio had a set of professionals who were identified as journalists, presenters, news presenters, television presenters. But today, when you look at social media, you, your family, your friends, colleagues, we're all on social media. Are we all journalists then? Not necessarily. We are not. We are not going into a particular area. We comment on different things. You might see a lovely video on YouTube. You might like it. You might write something about it. You might go onto Facebook and a friend has posted something that you don't like. You'd leave a negative comment. You'd go on to Twitter. There's some kind of burning issue that you're very angry about. And you write about it. And people start tweeting and retweeting and replying. Today you go on to LinkedIn, seen as a very important platform for the business community. Probably one of the most plat important platforms when it comes to the business community, when it comes to professionals, when it comes to the private sector taking industry, taking business, taking commerce to a all new level. Employers are scouting through LinkedIn. They're looking through it, looking for potential employees. They're headhunting via LinkedIn. They're not looking at the newspapers. They're not necessarily waiting for applications to be sent into a job advertisement that has been posted in Sunday papers. They're being proactive. They're being proactive in going out there and searching, identifying people who they feel fit the profile of the personality that they're looking for. That is what social media is doing. Countries, apparently, before issuing visas today, go through your Facebook account to see what you have said, how you have commented, what your general understanding is with regard to that particular country, how receptive you are to that country. These are things that are happening today. These are not things that were in existence some time ago. 
but these things are very much around in the current context. And this is where we've got to be ready. We've got to be ready to understand that in the 21st century, we have now, we're standing at the end of 2021. Another year in the third decade is over. We're about to start 2022. We've got years ahead of us, decades ahead of us, where we can achieve ample opportunity. It's there. It's just ours for the taking. We've just got to know how to take it, how to embrace it, how to make it productive, and how to enhance what we are already doing. This is where I like to talk about and base the rest of my session on discussing business communication with you. Is it something different? Isn't it communication? What does it mean? What do we identify to be business communication or communication that centers around the business world? What is the essence that we're trying to understand and why do we want to go down this road? Can we do without it? Is it possibly additional budgetary requirements, hence additional expense? Is it something where we've got to think twice and put on the back burner? Maybe that's something we can do next year, the year after. Let's focus on the priorities now. We've had a tough year. Oh no, we've had two tough years. So we're not going to be able to dedicate too much time to communication. We've got other priorities to get in order. That's not the case. This is where business communication has become absolutely vital in order for us to take organizations, enterprises onto a whole new plateau. Until and unless we do that, we are not going to achieve any kind of progress, any kind of potential, because we're going to be stuck where we were. Unfortunately, not only stuck where we were, but we're also stuck within a pandemic. This is where that light at the end of the tunnel very often comes out of looking at things from a very different angle, a very different perspective. And this is where I often use this phrase, not just think out of the box, it's to think no box at all. It's complete original thinking as to where we want to go and what we want to do. Much research has been done into business communication, why it is important, what it entails, what are the main characteristics? How does a cycle take place? Who are the main actors, stakeholders in it? Who are the main beneficiaries from it? But most importantly, identifying the results. And I'll come to those in a short while. When you look at the cycle, what is the business communication cycle? They talk about a sender. This is very similar to our own communication. You and I engage in communication in so many different ways. We call it intrapersonal communication and interpersonal communication. Within the spectrum of intrapersonal communication, we are communicating with ourselves. And you might think, hold on, I don't talk to myself. Of course you do. You talk to yourself on a continuous basis. You wonder what to wear. You think about the color of a tie. You think about what to eat. Think about where to go. You think about what you need to get. You're communicating with yourself. You're doing it. That's in terms of intrapersonal communication. We also engage in interpersonal communication, very similar to this chart that lies in front of you. We're communicating with another. Whether it is with ourselves, whether it is with another, whether it is within our organization, whether it is with other organizations, this cycle remains highly relevant. So as the sender sends out information, this is information concerning the business. They've identified memos, letters, reports. We talk today about tweets, posts, emails, 
handles that you have, things that you are using, tools that you are using, very important data that is being restricted to a certain number of words. Twitter talks about using only X number of words. You can't put an entire report on Twitter. If you want to post something on social media, posting pages and pages is absolutely useless. No one's going to read it. It has got to be concise. It has got to be succinct. It has got to be focused. That is where we are seeing a transformation. There was a time where what you were sending, the information, could be a massive report, a tome of a report. Hopefully people read it, but it's highly unlikely that anyone did. They would turn to the contents page and look for what they wanted. They'd go to that relevant page, read the paragraph they wanted, maybe browse through a few pages after, a few pages before. They might go to the index. They might look for some of the crucial words and they might look for them in the report. And that would be it. You took a lot of trouble to compile that massive report. Today, we're looking at an executive summary. That's what is being read. Everyone wants to be on the ball with an executive summary. We're looking at ways and means through which we can understand the most important aspects. Yes, if you want to go in detail, by all means, have the chunky paragraphs, give all the data, give all the examples, all the situations, absolutely essential. But we also need the most important points that has to stand out. And who, why are we doing all of this? Who is this for? The receiver. It can be going from an employee to an employer. It can be going to a customer. It can be going to other people within the business community. They're communicating with the government agencies. It could be private. It could be public. You're communicating. You could be communicating with your suppliers. You're sending a message. Remember one of the most important things in the process of communication if I want to tell you something, and if I do not convey it effectively, and if you don't receive the message the way I intended it, our communication has failed. The medium has been challenged. There is a problem. If I tell you that I'm going to eat five apples, and you hear it as two apples, there's something wrong in my speaking, or there's something wrong in your hearing, we're not getting the same message being passed from the sender to the receiver. This is where the medium that is used is very important. And that's where I go back to that earlier reference. In the past, when it came to getting a message out in the business world, a lot of it was done in the print format and thereafter in the electronic format. But today we're looking at it from a social media perspective as well. That is how we have got to now up our game. How do we measure up to standards that are being established around the world? That is where the receiver is waiting. But also remember, the receiver is getting messages from a lot of senders. You have got to be the most crucial sender. You have got to be the sender that that receiver is waiting to hear from or is going to respond to. How do you stand out as that sender? That is where communication becomes extremely effective. And of course, once you have received it, the feedback becomes extremely relevant. We hear about new projects, new programs, new policies being implemented. But very rarely do we hear about them being reviewed. One of the most important aspects of any policy, any program, any project, is looking back and reviewing it. What were the successes? Where did it fail? What were the shortcomings? What can be corrected? What can't be corrected? What are the problems it created? What were the new opportunities it opened up for us? All that comes back through the feedback. Reviewing anything that we do makes it that much more effective. If you want efficiency, if you want effectiveness, at the end of the day, you must review. 
It can be a program that you conduct. It can be a workshop. It can be a meeting with stakeholders. You need to understand all aspects of it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the wonderful, the amazing, the horrendous, everything. That's when you are able to move to that higher notch. That's where the receiver then turns to you as the sender and wants to receive from you. That's where you stand out as a sender. This is where the business communication cycle becomes so vital. Now, some of the areas that are being discussed or that are widely spoken about as benefits, and this is what Tim Rowe came out with in 2019, where he talked about strong decision-making, quicker problem-solving, healthier business relationship, improved customer relationship, increased employee awareness, lesser misunderstanding, enhanced professional image. And look at the very top, increased productivity. Employers love this. Organizations love this. Shareholders love this. Everybody wants to increase productivity. You want to increase the productivity of the staff. You want to increase the productivity of the organization. That is where you see the first benefits being accrued. Once you see that, then you realize it has been an investment that has been made in a very clear, precise manner, yielding results that are changing the organization. That is where it will help staff, help employees make stronger decisions, solve issues much faster, build very good relationships within organizations, healthy business relationships. You don't want to have a breakdown. You don't want to have a situation in which people are going to be suspicious of each other. You don't want them to be untrust with, untrusting of each other because that sets in when communication breaks down. That's where misunderstanding comes into the picture. When people don't understand what is being said, and I'm not talking only about the language here. If you don't understand the directives that are coming out of senior management, if you don't understand the grievances that are coming out of juniors, if you don't understand the issues being raised by your peers, it's going to lead to misunderstanding. And that's going to have an overall impact on everything happening in the organization. Now, what are some of the approaches that are being discussed widely in research that is being done into business communication? This is where they talk about business communication approaches. Now, some analysts have identified the need for internal, which means upward, or internal, which could also mean downward. But they also look at it from a perspective of it being external, also horizontal and lateral. Now, let's look at uh, just these few areas, what they entail, what they actually mean. Internal upward, we're talking chiefly about communication within the hierarchy. Workers, employees must be able to reach out to low level management, who must be able to reach out to middle level management, who must absolutely be able to reach out to top level management. Now, sometimes you might think we need to start with the top down approach. We need to give the directives first. Yes, the directives are important. I will come to that in a short while. But also understand that once organizations have a healthy environment where people are able to communicate freely with each other, but also communicate effectively. If they have an idea, a suggestion, how do they pass it up the ladder? There must be a mechanism. If they have a problem, how do they pass that up the ladder? There should be a mechanism for that too. Until and unless organizations have clear channels of communication, where people understand who they can talk to, what matters they can take up, there's going to be confusion. If I sit at the lowest rung on this particular chart, and I don't know what to do because of an issue that I am facing, I might start talking to my colleagues, my peers. Now, that's not the remedial measure. 
that's not going to resolve the issue I have. But they're the only ones who will listen to me. So I will communicate with them. Now, how do we improve that within the organization in terms of understanding the business world consists of various structures, various layers, tiers within it. How do we go up that level? How do we progress up that level? Where it is hugely beneficial to top level management to have um, such opportunities because top level managers are able to at that time understand what is happening throughout the organization. You are not stuck, caught out of the blues, surprised by certain things that happen. You have your ear to the ground. You are able to understand the complexities within the organization and you are adopting an approach that is going to really enhance communication within the different layers of this organization. Now, you might have thought I should have referred to this as first, where you have a downward communication process, where the issuance of directives, this must be very clear. How are directives passed down? This is just one structure that has been used for this particular research that was conducted. You might have your own hierarchical structure. Who sits at what level? What authority do they exercise? How are they able to resolve issues? How are they able to pass down instructions? The relationship from the managing director to the general manager and to every other level, even the supervisors and the employees and the workers must feel that at the end of the day, all of them have one job. Thanks to dialogue. Right. That was a short dialogue commercial break there where dialogue decided to cut us off. But anyway, we are back. And let me continue sharing once again. So, as I was saying, whether you're the managing director or the general manager, or you are an employee within the organization, you have one common approach, one common goal. What is that? You are looking at, you are approaching, you are focused on promoting, protecting the organization, its productivity, its harmony, its good name, its image. Because remember, at the end of the day, everybody in the hierarchy is on the same ship. If the ship sails, it's good for everyone on it. If the ship sinks, it's taking everyone down. And that is something you do not want in an organization. In instances in which there has been a breakdown in communication, especially in this structure, in this hierarchical approach, we have seen so many examples where organizations have floundered. They faced massive challenges. Some have wound up, some have struggled, some have managed to survive. But you don't want to go into that. Why should you go into that area? Why should you walk down that road? There are so many other options that are available. Now, the third point that they talk about is the horizontal lateral business communication. This is amongst peers, amongst colleagues. In certain organizations, you might come across people who would say, I'm not talking to that person. There's a huge breakdown in communication with that department. We don't like to deal with that set of employees. That's really going to cause massive damage to the overall structure. 
This is where when you're looking at that essence of communication, everything from communicating with the outside world to a daily greeting becomes important. That's all part of communication. How you meet people, how you greet them on a daily basis, how you write to them, how you address them, how you deal with their issues, whether you give them a patient listening or not, all of that becomes a part and parcel of business communication. And the fourth aspect there is where they talk about external business communication. I can't tell you how important the first three were because it was all about what is happening within the organization. You look at out of that first chart that I showed you, out of these four, three of them deal with what is happening within the organization. Look at how intra-organizational communication is so important. How important? Three vital areas of improvement within. Now you also talk about it. How is it going to improve the external dimension? Why? Because very often you have to deal with the outside world. You have a product to sell. You have someone to convince. You have a proposal to get out there. You want people to invest. You want people to buy. Why will they do it? There are so many other products out there. There are so many other goods out there. There are so many plantations out there. There are so many other beverage industries out there. Why should they focus on you? This is where any form of communication, whether it be an email, whether it be a phone call, whether it be a presentation, it's a reflection of the organization. Look at the responsibility that rests on each and every employee, irrespective of whether you're the managing director or whether you're a worker in the organization. Whatever your rank is, whatever your position, whatever your desk or the absence of a desk, that's not the point. You belong to organization X. The outside world looks at you and sometimes you're the only person they know in that organization. You are a reflection of the organization. How you communicate is a reflection of the organization. This is where the external business communication dimension becomes paramount. Because whilst you have mastered all the three areas within, we're looking at the internal downward approach, the upward approach, the horizontal approach. You've mastered all of that within the organization. But then you've got to deal with the outside world. And you've got to use a multiplicity of media. Whether it's social media, whether it's mainstream media, whether it's going to be documentation, reportage, all of this matters because all of this is going to convey that information that you had, that you have gathered from within, that product that you have made within, you're going to pass on to the outside world. Now, all that being said, what are the results? That's what we are interested in, right? We want to see results. How do we see these results? What is going to encourage these results? I talked about this earlier. It helps in increasing productivity. This is where effective business communication increases productivity across the staff layers. Why? It boosts teamwork. How does it go about doing that? This is where you're creating a trustworthy.
Right. So we are waxing eloquent about the importance of communication, but technology keeps failing us. This is where we have a lot more to do when it comes to improving technology in our wonderful country. Our country has huge potential. If only companies that are involved in the telecommunication industry continue to take those investments that they receive from us and put it to good use. Companies talk about increased number of clients they don't think about increasing their infrastructure. Sad. This is what happens in this country, at least. Now, I was talking about the first result. Helping in increasing productivity. This is where you're creating a trustworthy, understanding environment amongst those who are considered to be the employers and those who are the employees. This is where when you have an effective process of communication, it is related to cooperation with uh, these two categories, but also taking it to another level. You don't want them to feel that if there is an error, if there is a mistake, they're going to be massacred in the process. You've got to have an environment in which responsibility increases as we go up the ladder, not as we go down the ladder. This is something that organizations need to think about. Very often you hear about people who are at a junior level who would be penalized that much more than those who sit higher up in the hierarchy. You've got to think about these factors. Think about that. How do we increase productivity through communication here? Helps in increasing customers. Now, how on earth do we go about improving our customer base? We always understand that customers are a part and parcel. Some countries we'd say that the customer is king. <laughs> I don't know how far that uh, goes to our own country. But when we talk about the customer being the most important part of any business, we understand that effective communication with the customer will facilitate not only in retaining that customer, but attracting new ones. You want to do that. You want to see that happen. I was at an organization today. It's an organization that I visit um, as rarely as possible uh, but I have to when I'm not well. And today, when I went to that particular, it's a hospital. And when I went to the, it was hugely inconvenient. But everybody, from the moment you step into the premises, there's a security guard who's greeting you with a good morning. There's someone showing you how to take a very narrow path into an area. There's someone stepping forward and saying, yes, how can I help you? There's someone directing you to the correct place that you have to go to. Retaining customers is very important. Retaining the customer base. It was all to do with communication. This morning, my experience in that hospital, when it came to communication, was at an all-time high. That was how effectively they were communicating with the customer. Then, Enhancing business partnerships. Now we might wonder, how can we improve a partnership within the business environment or the business world? We talk about how there can be vendors out there, there can be external parties who are going to enhance our product, value add to our product. How do we see this changing? This is where there is going to be much more harmonious approach, much more effective approach in what we want to do, what we are trying to do. Facilitates innovations in business. This is the point I made earlier. Don't think out of the box, think no box at all. This is what we need to approach. This is what we need to be doing at the end of the day. Preparing of plans and policies. I told you as I started, you might have the most wonderful idea. It might turn out to be the most important idea in not only that day, that week, that month, in the entirety of that organization's existence up to that point. But it would just remain your idea unless you're able to communicate it effectively, plan it out well, and convert it into a policy. Similarly, when we look at the execution or implementation of plans and policies, right, you have now prepared. There's one thing to formulate, there's another process of implementation. In that implementation stage, you have got to be a very efficient implementer. 
once again, communication becomes mandatory. Boosting the efficiency of employees, letting people be able to achieve their goals, encouraging them, motivating them, pushing them up the ladder. If you spot uh, positions in which they would fit in, giving them the opportunity, helping them grow in their positions, helps in solving problems or issues that arise. And I talked earlier about misunderstandings, how those can be avoided. Facilitates decision-making. It's very clear. You have a point, you raise it. There's no ambiguity. There's no beating around the bush. We have a very direct approach to how we want to address an issue. Improves worker management, industrial relations, which we've already talked about. Helps in brand products, uh, product service promotions. We want everyone to be talking about our product. But how are they going to talk about it if we haven't communicated it to them effectively? Reducing the chance of conflicts. Increasing employee satisfaction levels. Increasing employee loyalty. Turnover in an organization or high turnover is a very worrying factor. Organizations have to really look within if there is high turnover because it means that people are dissatisfied. People are not leaving sometimes because they want a better job. They're leaving because they're not satisfied with the higher management or the way in which decisions are being made. There's been a breakdown in communication. They felt that they've not been able to address their issues. Enhances efficiency of managers and leads to effective leadership. Absolutely. People are able to, from on a daily basis, convey, communicate, convince, coerce others. That is seen as one of the most important aspects in management. And of course, proper functioning of different departments. You don't want one to be doing really well, another one to be doing terribly. You want everyone to be on board. You want all sectors to be on par. This is where the proper functioning requires or will benefit from the process of effective business communication. And finally, why do we do all of this? Everyone is in the business world. locally very well known, some have gone international. There's a lot, there's a lot. How do you stand out? How are you identified? How do you become that sender that the receiver will turn to? That is where you look at the enhancement of communication. If you understand the true essence of communication, your interactions in the business world will not only grow, there's not only progress, you will be able to achieve heights, levels, hitherto unexplored. That is why it is so very vital. I can't stress it enough. At the end of the day, if you want to make progress, if you want to improve, if you want to expand, one of the first things that you've got to invest in is communication. Right, I am done. I'm sorry I took a few more minutes there, Anruta, because of the interruptions that came about, but we managed to finish almost on time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, George. As you told very correctly, it's uh, always it's a challenging world with the present uh, this, uh, uh, days in this country. Uh, with the power cuts and un without communicating uh, the power cuts and also that, uh, that actually um, related to the, uh, today's topic as well that we uh, so uh, dear friends that uh, we have uh, discussed about the essence of communication in business world uh, as uh, dr george mentioned uh, if you communicate properly uh, as individual as in corporate world uh, so uh, you always unstoppable and also what he uh, re, uh, what he especially emphasized that when you are dealing, when you are communicating in a corporate world that you are not an individual, you are representing your corporate. So it's your brand. So uh, uh, properly communicating is very, very important in corporate world. So um, in a summary, communication thus helps understand people better, uh, removing 
misunderstanding and creating clarity of thoughts and expressions. So I think uh, with uh, uh, that uh, feedback, I think I can open with uh, Dr. George. Uh, George, I think you will permit me to raise, uh, uh, allow a few minutes to raise some questions from the sure. audience. Sure, um, sure. Thank you. Uh, so team, the session is open for the Q&A. If you all have any questions uh, and any clarification from Dr. George, uh, is a time for that. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. George. Um, Good evening, from, evening uh, Dr. George. Was that Kavisha or was Good it Sachin, Dr. George? Yes, yes, Sachinta, go ahead. I'm Sachinta from Kanani uh, today. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank our managing director, Dr. Roshan Rajare and Mr. Anandabhagamage and the ITC Continuous Learning Session for all of us. Uh, Dr. George, my question is, uh, what kind of a good com communication skills that we can uh, develop, we can use to develop connection with uh, people around us? Uh, Sachinta, your question is uh, really clear, but I think, uh, uh, yeah, doctor is back with us again. Yeah. Okay. okay uh, sure. Doctor, your mic is uh, muted. George, your mic is muted. So sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, we are okay. still having a power cut. I have yeah. the ring light working because that is plugged onto my laptop, but I'm sorry, Sachinta, okay. I missed the question. Could you please repeat it? Uh, yes. Uh, what kind of good communication skills that we can follow to have a good connection with people around us. Okay, when you say people around us, Sachinta, who are you referring to? Are you referring to inter within the organization or are you talking about other organizations? Uh, no, within the organization. Uh, within the the organization. One of the most working. important things, Sachinta, which probably we learn through experience is the need for patience. Sometimes people try our patience. Sometimes people are very irrational in what they do, in what they say. You know, it's very easy for us to react. But once we have reacted, then the door is closed. It's already done. You can't go back on it. Once you've said something, it's out there. You can't take it back. So that is where one of the most important things when it comes to effective communication, it is patience. In terms of understanding what people mean by what they say. Some people can be very mean in what they mean, what they say, but they might not mean it in that way. How do we understand it? That's something that we've got to take note of. Because remember, when it comes to an immediate work environment, you are with these people. Eight hours of the day, 10 hours of the day, whatever hours of the day, five days of the week, six days of the week, every week, every month, for the foreseeable future. You've got to be very mindful that in communicating with people around you, We've got to think and then talk. That is absolutely essential. Because once you have let something out, there will be an immediate breakdown in communication. If you react negatively, if you react in an angry manner, it's going to break down communication. We've got to be very restrained in that sense. But also, that is another opportunity. Because it helps you do, it helps you grow. As an individual, it helps you improve. In practical, can't be done, won't work, it's not possible. Give that person a patient listening. That person, that might be the only idea that person has to share with you. If you cut that person off at the very beginning, you're really demotivating the person. Right? But that's where I go back to the main point, patience. 
one of the most important aspects of communication is patience. I'm sorry, there was another question that came in just before that, Sachinta. I think uh, whilst both of you, if you Good evening, to... Dr. George. I'm uh, Kavish from Panavatta. Yes, please go ahead, Kavish. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our MD, Dr. Roshan Radhuri and Mr. Anrudh Gamage for conducting continuous learning sessions like this. Uh, my question is how to build up a good communication bond and trust within the people in the company to go for a brighter future. Okay, very good point there, Kavisha. One of the most important things in building trust in an organization is to ensure that no one is let down. You know, if we were in a physical environment, I have a lovely exercise that I do with people where we build trust. We build trust in a team. We built Dear team, I think uh, doctor has some problem with communication. Uh, the, uh, the mode he's using with the uh, frequent power cuts he's experiencing. I think I'm extremely sorry on that interruption, uh, Kavisha, on your question. Uh, so I think uh, uh, with that uh, uh, question, I think we'll keep the uh, full stop for the today's session. Um, I think maybe doctor will join, rejoin with us. So uh, uh, may I take this opportunity to thank uh, doctor uh, George Cook uh, for joining with us on today's session, even with an expert uh, session number 14. So uh, on behalf of our MD and the entire team of Ellis Plantations, uh, we would like to convey our great appreciation to Dr. George Cook. Uh, and also a special, a special before I conclude, uh, uh, yes, again, he's coming. Dr. Uh, George, your mic is muted. Sorry, right. I'll use my phone now because I don't think the laptop is going to come on again. Um, that's turning and the connection is not taking place there. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, as I was saying to Kavisha's question earlier on, Kavisha going back to that main point, not letting anyone down, Kavisha. That really changes communication. That really transforms communication at that particular point, Kavisha, because we begin to realize that you can trust, you can rely, you can support each other. If you don't have that support, if you don't have that trust, that's going to be a massive issue. But at the end of the day, always within an organization, within a team, it is absolutely crucial to ensure that whoever it may be who is on the team feels that they are an essential part of that team. That calls for good, solid communication. Okay. Thank you, uh, George. Uh, I think. Uh, Thank you very much. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Kavisha. And uh, I think uh, we should not disturb you further. Uh, I know that the challenges you have at the moment. So, uh, uh, so uh, dear team. So we'll uh, 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 give our deep appreciation to uh, Dr. George Cook uh, that with certain difficulties uh, he joined with us today, and I know his busy schedule, but he has uh, given this time for us to listen to his uh, inside knowledge on this particular subject. And uh, I know that even Calanivari team is uh, participating for different uh, session with, his, with him continuously. Uh, so uh, with that note, uh, Dr. Uh, George Cook, uh, George, thank you very much on behalf of our managing director, Dr. Roshan Radhar. Actually, uh, our MD also really busy today. He had to attend another meeting. He joined uh, with us for a while, but he has rejoined with another meeting. So um, on behalf of him and entire Hellis Plantations, I would like to thank you very much. And uh, I know, uh, we have a small uh, token of appreciation to you, George. Uh, so I think uh, uh, virtually uh, we can just show this to you, but I will ensure that you will receive this uh, in due course to your 
this in uh, your residence. Uh, so thank you very much uh, and uh, have a good day. Have thank you so much. Uh, thank so, you, thank you once again. Uh, dear team, before we wind up, I would like to uh, uh, keep a note on that. Uh, we are going to meet again on 28th of uh, this month. Uh, it will be another great session, uh, session number 15. Uh, we have invited uh, another senior engineer from Toyota Japan. He will conduct the session from Japan. Please reserve the date, uh, 28th December, next Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. in Sri Lankan time. So with that note, uh, once again, thank you, Doc. Uh, thank you, George. And thank you, everyone from Helis Plantation. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.